Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a really good start to your new year. Now, sometimes you come across a video, and I just have, which really uh, sticks in your throat. Sticks in your throat like breaded fish with a bone in it, and those, you just can't get rid of it, it's stuck there. And you go about your day, you talk away, and then you feel like that thing is in your throat. And I don't know what that was, sorry. Um, and I have just watched such a video which is stuck in my throat, it's stuck in my eyes, it's stuck in my mind, it's just really been bugging me and I thought I would share it with you because that's what friends are for, we like to share things that bug us and then you can get bugged out and I won't feel so lonely and pathetic. Anyway, uh, this video is from 2007, it's uh, an interview between Bill O'Reilly who is a news reporter uh, or presenter or journalist, you notice whenever we talk about Bill O'Reilly, we have to do this because uh, he's not what he seems. Um, he's Satan. Anyway, uh, Bill O'Reilly is uh, someone who uh, presents a, a, a news related show on Fox News that sterling, authentic, well regarded, um, integral cornerstone of the journalistic world uh, I'm being sarcastic and um, he's interviewing Ron Paul in 2007 and look this is nothing to do with politics right I mean I think you guys know I don't have any one position on my political views I'm conservative with some things I'm liberal about others but I'm probably more liberal than than, than that but um, I, I don't really put myself into any one uh, sort of position and um, because you just get associated with all sorts of loons if you do that. Anyway, so I'm not bothered about what your political position is. I'm not bothered about what your uh, political beliefs are when you watch this video. This is purely about journalism. It's nothing to do... You might agree with what Bill O'Reilly's Bill saying, right? Absolutely not a problem with that, okay? You might agree with what Ron Paul is trying to say. But this is just about how to conduct an interview, or rather how not to conduct an interview. And we're going to take a look at Bill O'Reilly's fantastic interview techniques. So let's have a little look, shall we? Uh, intruding on the whole Persian Gulf, if the United States, as you asked for in the debate last week, left the region. Do you fear that? Well, I, I fear that they uh, might want to do that, but I think our policy is leading to that. Everything that we do enhances the Ahmadinejad crowd in Iran. Uh, there's a dissenting force in Iran, and everything we do to undermine that government, we have our own CIA over there now trying to undermine that government. In doing that, we bring all their people together, so the ones who want to dissent and oppose him, are, you know, they lose their, their uh, power to do so. So I would say our policy is doing everything uh, conceivable to enhance Iran. Just okay, so first of all... It seems reasonable you know good old bill is letting uh ron paul uh put forward his point of view he's talking about the situation in iran with the conflict between the west and iran which uh are always sort of bubbling over and we can see that's 2007 but anyway it doesn't really matter um the fact remains is that yeah he's let ron paul talk a little bit just to just enough just enough sneaky sneaky to define what he's talking about so the viewer can then watch Bill go on a massive crusade let's watch some more the whole invasion of Iraq has helped uh, help the Iran well that may or may not uh, be true they're, they're the one it well, may or may I not be true I mean it's a debatable issue I'm not going to say it isn't true but it's a debatable issue but look oh Bill you crack me up why I oughta you see what he's doing here he lets the person he's interviewing talk a little bit then what he does is he jumps in starts to interrupt him so that he doesn't actually so Ron Paul doesn't get to finish his thought process and then starts using this little technique where he says well that may or may not be true uh, it's debatable it's not true but I'm saying that it may or may not be true I'm definitely saying that it's not true but I'm just letting you know that by saying that I think it may or may not be true that makes me an unbiased journalist. Fantastic. 
As we saw in the uh, summer war last year, Iran can arm and finance a force like Hezbollah and cause a lot of trouble, and the United States didn't have anything to do with that at all. So I think that um, in our national security situation, we have to assume that Iran is an aggressive nation, that it wants to injure the United States, and is going to use surrogates to do it. Now, if you have an Iran actively seeking nuclear weaponry, as you do, and if you have the ability of that country to hand it off to a Hezbollah or an Al-Qaeda or anybody else, you withdraw from the region, you give them carte blanche to do what they want, do you not, Congressman? See, 42 seconds. That's how long Bill O'Reilly just talked for. You see, when two grown-ups, Bill, have a conversation, you do what Ron Paul was doing there. He sat and he listened to your point even though you tried to dominate and bully the conversation by jumping in on top of what Ron Paul was saying, then he allowed you to speak and get your thought process out there so that people could hear your argument. And now what Ron Paul wants to do is he wants to provide his rebuttal. Let's see how that goes, eh? I think you're concerned about the wrong country right now because more than half of the Al-Qaeda that are committing suicide in Iraq right now are Saudis and nobody even talks okay, about look, that. I'm concerned about think, all the I, things, wait, but, me, please but when they're seeking answer. a nuclear weapon, when a country's seeking a nuclear weapon that's a danger to the USA, a state of danger, and you want to withdraw from the theater, that gives them carte blanche to do what they want, does it not? Now, do you see what happened there? Two things happened. First of all, Bill O'Reilly jumped in and started going, whoa, 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 you're talking about something that I don't want to talk about, even though it may be relevant and you may be trying to provide some sort of context for the decisions that are being made. I don't want to talk about that. So what's going to happen is I'm going to jump in right on top of what you're saying, not going to let you finish. The second thing that happened is that you heard Ron Paul very politely saying, please let me finish. Then what happened? Bill O'Reilly steamrolled the conversation, kept talking, and started talking about exactly what he wanted to do. Now, here's the thing. Yes, an interviewer has to somehow shepherd the interviewee throughout the process. That absolutely has to happen. And yes, politicians will try to evade and will try to, you know, get out of answering certain questions directly. But Ron Paul is trying to give you some context to the situation and you're jumping in right away and just basically going uh, 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 you're not talking i've got a louder voice on you i can speak louder on you which means i'm right and you're wrong well, well, first off, uh, you know, you have Pakistan, and they're not exactly the most pro okay, but I'm talking country. about Iran, Congressman. I'm not talking about Pakistan well, why not, at this point. Why don't you ever let me, uh, you know, answer, answer, the, you're answer the question? Because you're not directly answering the question, sir. Okay, so he's actually saying, please let me finish my point. If you actually let me finish my point, maybe you would understand what I'm trying to say. And then Bill O'Reilly says, well, you're not answering the question, sir. I like to feign respect. And, you know, he's... All Ron Paul wants to do is finish his point, say what he's saying. And, you know, yeah, he's talking about Pakistan. God forbid should someone draw an analogy or a comparison to something else to elucidate their argument. You know, God forbid someone should do that. Because that's a terrible thing to do. I mean, uh, this guy's worse than Hitler. Because, uh, the no, I do not fear them, as, li as you do, as many do, because they want another war. They want to spread this war. This has been the plan by the neoconservatives to have this major overall, uh, this revamping of the whole Middle East, precisely the reason the Al-Qaeda is growing. The Al-Qaeda is growing because of our policy. Our national security is threatened because of our policy, and it makes it much worse. So I see the Iranians as acting logically and defensively. Okay, again, two things happen here. First of all, we hear Bill O'Reilly go <gasps> in the middle of the conversation like he's taking a big breath and he really wants to vent. But instead, what happens is he doesn't cut Ron Paul off here. No. What happens? Well, Ron Paul's making a point about how he believes the neoconservatives in America are somehow manipulating the situation because they want a war. And what happens once he's, when Ron Paul's actually talking about this, talking about his point, up comes these images of all of these terrorists insurgent looking people with bazookas and yeah this is what you should fear you know Ron Paul's saying don't fear them you know don't get involved but you know we put images uh, don't even know where those images are from but you know images of people carrying guns and bazookas and, and looking mean and menacing and nasty because at the end of the day that will override exactly what Ron Paul's trying to say to you
We've been fighting the Iranians since 1953. We overthrew their government through the CIA in 1953. We, we were allies with Saddam Hussein in the 1980s, and we encouraged him to invade Iran. All right, so I just uh, want to get Iran. there. I don't, we don't need a history lesson, but I do want to get this but on you the have record. To, you have to understand. I do you understand the region, man. We don't need a history lesson. Well, you know, we might not need a history lesson, but Bill, you most certainly do, because the fact remains, once again, in building an argument, Ron Paul is trying to either draw a comparison to something, or, logically, he's looking at the history books and saying, right, what is the cause and effect here? What has actually brought us to this situation? Because maybe we can learn from that and say, well, if things keep escalating, perhaps we've been doing it all wrong and we should try a different policy. And that's exactly what Ron Paul is saying here. But no, you start saying, oh, we don't need a history lesson. You know, you disregard and dismiss what he's saying as if it's, you know, and you don't even say it's not true. You're dismissive of it. You're just like, we don't need a history lesson. You know, God forbid Fox News viewers actually learn something about, you know, how, you know, every country has got involved in espionage and, you know, try to bring up revolutions in other countries. Every country's done it, every country's done it, even the United States of America, and the United States of America have done it quite a few times. And that's all Ron Paul's saying is, look, at the end of the day, we might do these things to try and um, protect ourselves, but in the end, it's causing problems. Now, regardless of whether you believe that or not, you might, you might agree with Bill, Bill O'Reilly, but at the end of the day, he's still not letting Ron Paul finish what he's saying. And how can you possibly have a debate if you cannot let someone finish a fucking sentence? Oh, but we don't have time to do the history it, lesson tonight. I just want to get this on the record. We don't have time. We don't have time for me to finish one point. Just one point. That's two. But one point. We don't have time for it. Then if you goes on for another two minutes. You don't fear Iran, even though Iran has demonstrated it can start a war, which it did last summer with its Hezbollah Hell. surrogates, and it's stated, it's stated that it wants to do damage to Israel, wipe it off the face of the okay. earth, and, you got and is developing a nuclear weapon. And you don't fear them? You, yes, I, I worry about it, I'm concerned about it, but what I'm saying is the very policy that you advocate is encouraging that. What I'm saying, Bill, is this. They put it in perspective. They don't have a weapon. They're not likely to get one in 10 years, according to our CIA. That's not true. Just that's, think that's about not true. Think, I mean, uh, everybody right, says it's it five soon? years or less. And This is something I love to see people with an agenda do. You know, when someone's making a point, you just cut them off and you just say, that is simply not true because my word overrules anything you can possibly say. I'm not going to back it up by saying anything. I'm just going to throw things at you and say that is simply not true. Without us in the theater, it's going to happen a lot quicker. How come, how come we got through the Cold War when the Soviets had 40,000 of them? Because it was, was mutual destruction. Was it was mutual destruction. Now you can hand... Bill, would you just shut up? Just for a second, just shut up. Shut that hole in your face up. Let the man finish his point, you know? I mean, if your point is so well articulated, if it has so much to back it up, if you are so correct and he is so wrong, then you can let him finish what he's saying and then you can jump in afterwards and you can blow everything that he said out of the water with your well-researched and well-constructed argument. If you can't do that, no, you can do is just tread over every fucking syllable that this man even happened to just let slip out of his face, then uh, you've already lost the argument because you're just trying to bully the conversation. To realize that if you keep living in this dreamland of saying that they attack us because we're free and prosperous, believe me, we're never well, going to get Well, if you think that we, if we withdraw off the, off the Gulf, if we get our people out of there, there's not going to be any more terrorism, then you're living in the dreamland. You didn't even want to go into Afghanistan to punish those people, did you? You're wrong, Bill. You're wrong on that. I voted for that. So you be careful on your quotes. I mean, you're well, just in a debate, you said you don't want to be there. You don't want to be in Afghanistan. Well, they didn't, they didn't do what we were supposed to. We were supposed to go after, the, uh, after Osama bin Laden. We let him go into Pakistan. We didn't let him. When will journalists and reporters be held responsible for the things that they say? I mean, politics politicians, famous people, anybody you want to mention, as soon as they let anything slip, 
journalist reporters are right on it and probably rightfully so but the fact that remains that when a journalist comes up and says something like Bill O'Reilly just did there he said you didn't want to go into Afghanistan and Ron Paul said no but wait a minute I voted for that how can you possibly say that he doesn't even apologize for it it just goes on to something else oh well you said that you didn't you know like the idea of you know what you're doing in Afghanistan now you know which is a very different thing to saying you didn't think you should go there in the first place you know it's a very very different point and he's not held accountable for it you know I'd make that man apologize to me if he said something like that which is just basically a blatant lie don't go anywhere he escaped in there that's war that's yeah, what happens in I, I war know. But what did we do? We went into doing exactly what Bush said he wouldn't do, into nation All right, let me do I got, only got, I got one more question. We're in Afghanistan now trying to have that country stem back the Taliban tide. Are we doing the wrong thing there? Right now, we're doing the wrong thing because we didn't do what he was authorized to do. The All president right. ignored going after bin Laden, and we don't need to be in nation building. We need to defend this country and defend our national security, and our national security interests are not served by the policy that we're All following right. in the Middle East. It's, do, it's undermining our national security. Right, so we got we it. have to come to realize it. We got it, and we appreciate the lively debate. Thanks for appearing tonight. Next on the rundown, will Americans start to rebel against... We got it, and thanks for a lively debate. Yeah, well, we're lucky we got it, Bill, because if it wasn't for the fact that Ron Paul is quite concise in what he's saying, we probably wouldn't have got anything that he was trying to say, because you, my friend, are a conversation Nazi. It's one thing that irks me more than anything else when you're having a debate with someone, when you're talking to someone, and all they do is try to railroad you and just talk over anything that you say because somehow they think if they keep talking eventually the other person will give in and will be made to look ridiculous or you'll be made to look smart and that your point's absolutely true. I mean, where does journalistic integrity come into this, man? Where does it come into it? Because I don't understand, I don't understand how people can report news, and I use report and news, uh, you know, in the loosest possible terms. How can people be doing that in such a biased way and not be called out on it properly. Now I know loads of people do call them out on it in terms of other shows, people make fun of them and things like that, but at the end of the day there are people who watch your show Bill who will take what you say as gospel. So you're showing absolute disregard for journalistic integrity and I think it's ridiculous and at the end of the day even if what you say is right, because I have to hold my hands up here and say, you know, I don't agree with everything that Ron Paul says. You know, I absolutely believe in, for example, a national health service. That's, uh, you know, our health care. You know, that's something that absolutely people need. He doesn't agree with that. So I completely disagree with him on that. And there's loads of other things I disagree with. And I disagree with Bill O'Reilly and a lot of things as well. But we're talking here mainly about the technique, the way to construct an interview, the way to talk to another human being and to actually enter into debate. If you debate someone in an aggressive, bullying way, there is no hope in hell of bringing in anyone with that point of view and perhaps enlightening them, perhaps even bringing about a change in them where they might actually even start to think like you about things. But God forbid people should start to think like you, Bill, because if they did, we would all be screwed. And I would like to leave the last comment on this video for what is the top rated comment on YouTube on this video that uh, Bill O'Reilly and uh, Bill O'Reilly and Ron Paul have. This is a top rated comment and this sums up everything beautifully and it's by someone called Nilo469. So here we go. Disrespectful cunt never lets him answer the question. 